at the intersection of three bustling highways. Ken Amundsen of Amundsen Violins builds, repairs, and appraises violins from around the world. I work with violins for a living. I create violins and I also restore violins that have been damaged for performers all over the United States and parts of Canada. And Last week I sent one back to Norway. It, the term for what I do is called luthier. Well, Amundsen Violin has existed as a retail storefront for about 35 years. The name Amundsen has been associated with making and restoring for three generations. My business uh, as Amundsen Violin has been in Benson here for nine months. Previous to that, it was eight and a half years in St. Paul. Then uh, Amundsen Violin was 21 years in Alexandria, Minnesota. And then it was eight years in Coon Rapids, Minnesota. I came back to Benson because I lived here until 1959. I was 14 years old when my parents moved out of here for economic reasons. And I thought the only place on earth that anybody would want to live would be Benson. And if you didn't live there, you probably wanted to live there, you know, as a little boy. I felt sorry for my sister when she got married and had to move to Montevideo, Minnesota, you know. And uh, always, always wanted to come back to Benson. <laughs> This corner was the corner to be on when, when you were a kid. Highway 12, U.S. Highway 12, comes out of Minneapolis and uh, continues through town and goes out towards Danvers. Minnesota Highway 29 comes from the Alexandria area and crosses at this corner and goes down toward Montevideo. Highway 9 from the New London area and St. Cloud area comes through town and heads out towards Clontarf. This was the main corner that you hung around as a kid. The, the restaurant that was in this building was called the Viking Cafe. And everybody remembers the Viking Cafe. Several months ago, a man by the name of Daniel Allen Butler gave me a call. Something that's for sale now at Aldridge and Sons in London, England, is, an, is a violin that they're looking for six figures for that supposedly was found several days after the Titanic went down, and Daniel Allen Butler wanted my opinion. So I did an experiment with this violin. This was a very decent, uh, not a rare, valued violin, probably worth four or $500 is all. And I put it inside this case in good condition. The case and everything was good condition. And I put the case and the violin in 40 degree salt water right out by my door and let it soak overnight. And when I took it out of the barrel, the case had come apart all in pieces and the violin had totally come apart. All those, all the parts that you see laying here were, were off of it. And this is kind of a nutshell version of, of my opinion on the violin. But anyway, I, I feel like I proved that they did not have a violin that was soaking in salt water for 10 or 14 days or whatever they're claiming. The professional um, classical violinists or classical players that I've done business with, you wouldn't recognize their name, you know. And it's too bad because they actually work harder than the country and bluegrass people. But um, country and bluegrass people that I've done business with is uh, Ricky Skaggs, he's a very popular country player and a bluegrass player. Uh, Vince Gill, uh, Marty Stewart. Uh, a couple of years ago I carved, I hand carved a gold mounted bowl for Allison Krauss. She's Allison Krauss in Union Station and she's very, very popular. And then just about every act in Branson, Missouri, I've done a lot of business with. A family that I've done a lot of business with there is the Dutton family, and they started out mom and dad and seven kids, and they were just 
kind of experimenting, playing their music, and they, they grew and grew and grew and grew until they bought one of the biggest theaters in Branson. They've been there over 20 years now. The thing about it is, is that it's fun to meet those famous people, but the amount of times that that happens, you would never, ever make a living off of it. I appreciate much more the mom and dad that bring a 10 or 14 year old daughter or son in here and they're doing their best to pick out a, a respectable violin for their child to learn on and so I try to suit up a, a nice instrument that that is very sturdy and very durable for the young student I try to take care of them that way because I do appreciate the average person that walks through my door and then there's a lot of elderly people that are sitting there retired and wondering what their family violin is worth and what they should do with it. And so part of my advertising and what I promote is uh, free appraisals for anybody that carries a violin through the door. I'll appraise it and tell them what they can do with it and what the likely um, activity they might have if they put it on the market as opposed to restoring it and then putting it on the market. I try to be helpful and I think it ends up being helpful. There's an awful lot of Benson that was here when I was 14 in 1959 that I still love very, very much. And it's the closeness of the community. And everybody knows you and, and respects you. And uh, for my graduating class, which would have been 63, I think I've heard something like 60 or 70 percent of the 125 students in my class are still here in Benson and they pop their heads in and out of the door. <laughs> I told them about my coffee crew. So. Yeah. And so I have come home. I'm not kidding. I say that with a, a real good feeling in my heart. I have come home.